Welcome. After learning all about the processing of the natural gas, it is but an important issue to see to it that whenever we are talking of the various types of connections in the various uh, systems in the natural gas plant, uh, we have been using many of the correlations to find out the pressure drop inside the pipeline in the various processing systems. Now, you will find that there are some special type of equations which are used in the natural gas systems to uh, estimate the pipeline inside the, uh, the uh, pressure drop inside the various types of pipelines. So, uh, in this particular lecture, uh, we shall be looking into the pressure drop calculations in the uh, pipelines in the natural gas systems. So, in this uh, thing, we shall be studying the piping in natural gas systems and we shall be looking into the various piping systems and the pressure drop in the pipeline. Now, this will be including the, uh, we know that the pipings are included for transportation of natural gas and other hydrocarbon gases like LPG. So, and examples are like natural gas gathering systems, gas distribution piping and the gas transmission piping. So, at various places we are using these pipings. So, we find that the in a piping whenever there is some fluid is flowing, there will be some frictional losses and also some losses will happen whenever there is any kind of change in the direction of the flow. So, this frictional losses is generally called a skin friction and the uh, loss of the pressure due to the change in the flow direction is called the form drag. So, these kind of drags uh, result in the loss of energy of the flowing fluid and which necessitates to use a compressor or some kind of pump during the flow of the uh, fluid over a long distance. So, in case of natural gas, we also need to have some kind of compressor from uh, what, we, what we call the compressor stations we need uh, from distance to distance to uh, again re-energize, again give the external energy so that the gas can keep flowing. So, there are various types of losses. We have some major loss which are generally in the state pipelines and there are minor losses and, and these are something through the fittings and valves. Now, major and minor does not mean that one is greater than the other. It is just that we are uh, the nomenclature has been made in such a manner that major loss, uh, when we say major loss, we mean the straight line uh, pipe losses and the uh, minor loss we talk in terms of the fittings and valves, etc. Or there could be something like entrance effect, exit losses, whenever something is uh, or there is some diverging section, you know, converging sections. In all these uh, changes in the uh, area of cross section of the flow also causes some losses. So, all these things are coming under the minor losses <coughs> and the total head loss is the summation of the major loss and the minor loss. Now, here to understand this calculation of losses, first we go back to the Bernoulli's equation and we know that in the Bernoulli's equation, we have the potential energy, the kinetic energy and the pressure energies and other than that, we also have some modifications in the made in the Bernoulli equation to account for the frictional losses in the pipeline. So, this is basically an energy balance equation that is the first law of thermodynamics and in this uh, we know that we suppose we take this kind of a pipeline and here we see that the pipeline uh, in a general case it may have some elevation. So, this is the elevation of the pipeline Z A and Z B and this elevation is generally measured by considering the center line or the central axis of the pipeline. So, this is this particular curve is giving the central axis of the pipeline. So, we are measuring the elevation with respect to the some datum, some datum and the this center line. <coughs> and then at the inlet, it might be having some velocity and some pressure and at the outlet again, it might be having some other velocity and pressure. Now, you understand this, we have uh, shown that this particular cross section of the pipeline may not remain constant during the flow of the fluid. So, here we see that on this side it is smaller and on this side it is bigger. So, what happens that whenever the cross section is changing, it would mean that even if the mass flow rate is constant, but depending on the pressure, temperature and the cross sectional area, the velocity of the fluid may undergo a change. And as we know that for incompressible fluid, if the cross sectional area is constant, if the mass flow rate is constant, then in that case velocity would remain same in the two sections. 
So, here we are writing the Bernoulli's equation. So, this first term is signifying the potential head and this is showing the pressure head, this is the uh, kinetic head and this H p is the equivalent head added to the fluid by the compressor. That means, if you are using some compressor, so this compressor itself is adding some energy to the fluid. So, that is accounted for on this side inlet side and the outlet side we again have the potential head, the pressure head, the kinetic head and now we are adding the frictional losses which are taking place during the flow of the fluid in through this particular section. Now, this is the energy balance which we shall be using time and again to find out the pressure loss in the pipeline. Now, in this pressure loss there are various formulas are de developed based on the Bernoulli's equation to find out the uh, uh, performance in terms of the pressure drop and these uh, all these formula whichever formula we are we may be encountering uh, we will be using some kind of gas properties like a uh, compressibility factor the gas gravity and with the flow rate, the pipeline length, the diameter and the pressure along the pipeline. So, these are the parameters based on which various types of formula have been derived like these are the various types of formulae which have been given in the literature, but other than these also there are plenty many. So, we are here we have just we are just considering a few of few of the commonly used uh, uh, formulae which are used in for the uh, piping calculation in the natural gas systems and we shall be looking into these equations one by one. So, first let us go to the general flow equation and this is also called the fundamental flow equation because, uh, because fundamental because this is the one which is based on the theory, theory that is the energy balance and from that we derive various other types of equations and this relates the gas flow rate, the gas properties, pipe size, flow temperature with the pressure drop. So, we want to calculate pressure drop and this pressure drop is related to all these uh, operating parameters of the fluid and it involves some friction factor and whenever we talk of friction factor we need again some other formula to find out the friction factor and again there are some formula which shall again uh, we shall look into like Colebrook white formula then modified Colebrook white equation and the AG equation. So, th these kind of formula are used to find out the friction factor. So, to develop this particular uh, flow equation, we will not go into detail of this because these details have been given in any standard fluid mechanics books and in the reference I have also given some uh, standard fluid mechanics books. So, you can look into those books to find out how one derives these equations. Here I shall just mention you that the basis of the derivation that here we find that we take some kind of pipeline with a diameter uh, d and this is the inside diameter of the pipeline and then some pressure at the inlet and some pressure P2 at the outlet and the length of this particular section is taken to be L. The fluid is at a temperature of T f and the flow rate is q and in this case we are assuming that the temperature is remaining constant, but the pressure is varying from the inlet to outlet and please understand that if the pressure is remaining constant or pressure is not varying then there cannot be any flow. So, in that way the P 1 has to be more than P 2 that inlet pressure has to be more than the outlet pressure. Now, here we have the uh, isothermal equation that is if we consider the T f to remain constant then this is the equation we shall be able to derive. So, this is the equation by which we can find that what is the flow rate and here we take some standard temperature sometimes we need to take some base temperature pressure because uh, the gas is generally compressible. So, its density changes with both temperature and pressure. So, that is why we need to define the um, or we need to mention the flow rate with respect to some standard or base temperature pressure. So, here in this case this T s and P s are the uh, some standard temperature pressure and these are the actual uh, pressures in the pipeline. This gamma g is the compressibility factor, T f is the fluid temperature, L e is the length of the section of the pipe and Z is the compressibility factor, D is the inside diameter of the pipeline. Now, in this case you will find that there is some kind of this constant. Now, this constant value may change depending on the units 
we are using. Somebody may use the SI unit system and sometimes we may use the FPS that is the foot pound second. So, British units what we call. So, depending on the kind of units, unit system we are using to uh, um, derive these equations, this uh, the magnitude of this particular constant will remain same. And in this case you see that this has been de defined in terms of the FPS system that is the flow rate is in the standard cubic feet per day the pressure is in PSIA that is the pounds per square inch absolute, the temperature is in Rankine and the, pi the length of the pipeline is in miles and diameter is in inches. So, whenever you are using this particular equation, you have to be careful that you are sticking to this particular units to find the flow rate. So, if you are making any kind of mistake in unit, then you will get wrong result. Now, here in similar the same equation has been put in terms of the uh, SI unit. Now, you can see here that other remains the same except that this particular um, thing uh, is changing, the constant changing and of course, there is something called the transmission factor and we shall look into transmission factor later on. Now, as we said that the pressure is varying while we are considering the temperature to be constant. Now, because the pressure varies, so does the compressibility of the gas. So, to find out the compressibility of the gas earlier, we learnt many methods uh, in our earlier lectures. So, in these lectures, we found that this compressibility is determined maybe from some equation or using some, some kind of uh, uh, figures and in these, sometimes we need the reduced pressure. So, whenever we are talking about this reduced pressure, reduced temperature, so we need to fix the temperature, we need to fix the pressure. So, in this case, because the pressure is varying, so what is done for a quick estimation, the pressure is taken to some average and so somebody can use the arithmetic average, but better than the arithmetic average, we can use this particular expression which has been given here. So, this has been found to be better representation of the average pressure inside the pipeline. So, that is why this particular in this you see that it is P 1 plus P 2 minus P 1 P 2 divided by P 1 plus P 2. If you look at this expression, you will find that this is some kind of an harmonic average and this is particular thing if you divide by 2 and multiply by 2, this is some kind of an of a arithmetic average. So, it is that means is this expression is considering both the arithmetic average and the harmonic average of the pressure. And then there is transmission factor F, this is related to this Darcy's friction factor and this uh, we will find that there are different types of friction factor later on. Now, in that equation, earlier equation, the elevation effect was not taken into account that is the difference between Z A and Z B. Now, in this case, if we take the elevation effect into account, then what we will find? We will end up in such an equation and you see that this uh, uh, length this equivalent length is taken to be j into l and this j is given by this particular expression e to the power x that is exponential to the power s minus 1 divided by s and this l is the actual length of the pipeline between stream upstream and downstream ends and this is equivalent that means because of elevation this is the equivalent length even though this is the actual length. Now, this elevation correction factor uh, will be defined later on and this uh, this study, this is the elevation correction factor and we shall see that if there are many uh, segments means the pipeline, the whole pipeline consists of many segments and each segment has different elevations. So, what we need to do to find out the equivalent length over the whole system, what we do? We use this particular equation and in this equation we find that this L i represents the various sections and for each L i we have some particular J i and one particular S i value. So, this way we are able to account for the elevation and this S is also given in various manners in before the type of unit system we are using. So, if we are using FPS unit, then this is the particular expression we are using to find out the uh, flow rate and here you see that the only thing we find that the outlet pressure has got some kind of modification due to elevation. This particular thing is taken to be 1 when we do not have any elevation effect. So, and this S is given by this particular expression and this H 2 H 1 are the elevations that means at the inlet and outlet the difference between the inlet and outlet elevation is given by this H 2 and H 1. 
and we see that again this uh, for calculating the s again we have to use the particular system of units and the in this case the we are using the fps unit a similar expression can also be given for the SI unit. So, this is the expression of the S and again you find that the constant value has changed for both the um, Q and the S for the SI unit. Now, for the complexity factor, uh, we have many equations. We will not be going to all the equations. This Cartes method we already studied in our earlier lectures. So, here we shall be looking into only a few of those which are very common that is the Hall, uh, Hall Yarborough equation and the CNGA equation. So, this is the Hall Yarborough equation. Now, in this case you find this is the particular expression given for the Hall Yarborough equation. In this case we find the complexity factor which is given in terms of the reduced density and the uh, pseudo reduced temperature about which we learnt earlier and this pseudo reduced temperature is obtained by uh, dividing the actual temperature by the pseudo critical temperature and then we have the pseudo reduced pressure. So, using this pseudo tem reduced temperature, pseudo reduced pressure and the reduced density we find the expression for the z and in this case this pseudo reduced density is unknown and which is obtained from again solving this particular expression. So, here you see that this is a highly nonlinear equa equation and to solve this particular equation for the pseudo reduced density what you need to do is that you have to use some uh, suitable numerical technique to find out the root of the equation. For example, you may use the Newton Raphson method to find out this um, uh, value of the uh, pseudo reduced uh, sorry reduced density. Now, in this equation you have uh, these two parameters a and b over. Uh, so, these a and b parameters can be found out from this a and b here. So, these two parameters again can be given in terms of the pseudo reduced temperature. So, using this particular values you can um, use the Hall Yarborough method. Another very common method is the CNGA method and this method is generally used for a pressure uh, of more than 100 psia. So, uh, for this the z is given by this particular expression and you see this expression is much simpler than the Hall Yarborough and in fact it is much simpler than the other expressions I have just shown. So, uh, this is a very popular expression in the natural gas systems and uh, uh, so we find that this uh, this uh, CNG stands for the uh, California Natural Gas Association. Okay. So, this is the here we are using the temperature of the fluid directly and here we have the average pressure and here uh, is the gas gravity. And for a pressure less than 100 psia the z is taken to be almost equal to 1 that is we are we may take it to be an ideal gas. Now, we find that the flow rate increases with the decrease in the gas gravity or the gas density and decrease in the complexity factor, a decrease in the gas temperature, increase in the pipeline uh, pipe length for a given pressure drop between the inlet and the outlet and increase in the inside diameter. So, these deductions we have made from the earlier equations I have shown you. So, you can easily see from the equations how the uh, flow rate would vary with the pressure, temperature and the pipeline dimension. And here we also find that the um, if the temperature of the gas is higher, we find the flow rate will decrease. So, for higher flow rate we need to see to it that the gas remains at a lower temperature. Now, the frictional pressure drop we had, which we have found in the expression in the expressions of the flow rate coming. Now, this depends on the fluid flow rate, the specific gravity of the fluid, the fluid viscosity, the inside diameter of the pipe, the pipe length and the pipe roughness. So, these are the common factors which determine the pressure drop through a, a pipeline. Now, for that first we need to know uh, the gas velocity why because this gas velocity is related to the flow rate and also the kind of 
fluid regime flow regime we are having whether it is laminar flow or turbulent flow or transition flow that will also be determined by this gas velocity through the Reynolds number. So, we need to know that how to find out this gas velocity. Now, this gas velocity is generally should be the relative velocity between the uh, pipeline and the fluid. Now, in this case the pipeline is generally a static it is not moving. So, because the pipeline is not moving, so the relative velocity between the fluid and the pipeline is the absolute velocity of the gas. Relative velocity means we subtract one from the other. So, pipeline velocity is 0 and the gas velocity is its own value. So, if I subtract some value from 0, it remains the same. So, the absolute velocity of the fluid itself is the relative velocity of the fluid. And the velocity is generally given by this particular expression in terms of the volumetric flow rate and the cross sectional area. Now, generally the gas is compressible, so the volumetric area varies with both temperature pressure. So, what we do? We relate this total this mass flow rate for the standard condition and the given condition because mass flow rate will remain the same no matter what the temperature and pressure are. So, we read that, that is q dot rho is the mass flow rate at the given condition and q s dot and rho s are the uh, mass is the this product is the mass flow rate at some standard condition. So, we uh, equate this and after putting this, uh, uh, this equation of state in terms of the z value that is to consider it to be a non ideal gas we find that this is the uh, if you do some kind of mathematical manipulations we find ultimately we arrive at this expression which gives us the velocity in terms of the standard uh, volumetric flow rate the pressure and the temperature and the compressibility factor and generally for the standard temperature pressure this z is this compressibility factor is taken to be unity now, depending on the type of unit system we are using, again we find we have different expressions for the Q dot and here we have it is for the FPS system and this is for the SI unit. Okay. So, depending on that we are finding that we have different types of units. So, these units have to be taken care of and now we have some something called erosional gas velocity and what it means? What it means is this is whenever is gas is um, flowing through the pipeline we suppose we want higher flow rates but but we find that as we as we keep increasing the gas velocity it causes some kind of vibration and noise in the pipeline during the gas flow and the more the velocity of the gas the more the chances of erosion of the from the wall of the pipeline so we need to be careful whenever we are trying to increase the velocity of the gas so, this is the expression that has been suggested uh, to find out the maximum allowable gas velocity and this is in the FPS system it is given by 100 divided by root square of the density and after putting the equation of state this is the expression we are getting and in this case the R is taken with the uh, universal gas constant is taken to be this value and this is the density density uh, is in this particular uh, pounds per cubic feet the temperature is Rankine and P is in PSIA. Now, generally the operational velocity is taken to be about 50 percent of the maximum allowable velocity that is we are keeping a buffer of 50 percent for the any variation due to some kind of abnormalities any variation we are keeping this buffer. Now, the major loss is given in by the Darcy's equation here we have this expression and this v square by 2 g is signifying the kinetic head that means this head loss is found out in terms of the loss in the kinetic head of the fluid and here we have a something called the friction factor and this friction factor has been um, can be found out by uh, using different types of expressions and has been related by different um, researchers. Now, we have the Reynolds number will determine the type of flow regime and depending on the flow regime we will have different types of friction factor and there are two types of friction factor one the Darcy friction factor and the fanning friction factor and these two are related by this that the Darcy friction factor is generally four times the fanning friction factor and in our uh, subsequent lectures 
we shall be using the Darcy friction factor and we shall not be using F D anymore. We shall be using only F and we shall understand that we are talking about the Darcy friction factor. Now, here we have an expression for the laminar flow friction factor and this you can also find out in any standard fluid mechanics book and this is for the Darcy friction factor it is 64 by Re. In some books you may find it to be 16 by Re and then understand that they are talking about the fanning friction factor. So, uh, you may find both type of expressions in the fluid mechanics book. So, since we are using Darcy friction factor, we are using 64 by Reynolds number and Reynolds number as you know it is the uh, d v rho the d is the diameter inside diameter of the tube, v is the velocity of the fluid, rho is the density and mu is the viscosity or the dynamic viscosity. And we have different types of turbulent flow, turbulent flow may be in the smooth pipes and in this case the friction factor depends on the Reynolds number alone. In case of rough pipe, it depends more on the roughness of the pipe than the Reynolds number and in between some roughness and uh, smooth pipe, the F may depend on both the roughness and the Reynolds number. So, here we have the Reynolds number expression for different types of units again. So, here we have the if you have the SI unit, then this is the particular expression for the Reynolds number and in this case what we have done, we have substituted the area of cross section in terms of the pi by 4 d square. So, that is how we are getting this particular expression uh, for the Reynolds number. Here you find the di diameter of the tube is coming in the denominator and it is expressed in terms of the volumetric flow rate of the gas and the temperature pressure. And the FPS units we find that rest of the things remains constant only the part this, uh, un this value has changed. Okay. So, if you take care of these expression uh, uh, units, then we have the different types of expressions and here for the turbulent uh, friction factor, we have various types of mathematical expressions or we can use this Moody's chart to find out the directly the uh, friction factor from this graph. So, using this uh, graph, we can find out the friction factor and uh, the pipe roughness is given like this that the absolute or internal roughness divided by the inner pipe diameter. So, this is the particular roughness factor we use in this particular expression here you find that in this expression we need E by D value and this E by D value has been is defined like this and here in this particular table we find we have the various types of roughness uh, given in terms of the inches or in terms of the millimeter for various types of material like wrought iron, galvanized iron, cast iron, concrete etcetera. So, we are given this and again we have a transmission factor which is given by this particular thing and this is kind of opposite of the friction factor. Friction factor tells us the kind the resistance and the various transmission friction factor says that how much gas can get transmitted or uh, transported through the pipeline. So, the greater the transmission factor, the more will the flow rather the less the friction factor more will the flow and this particular expression is given by this F equal to 4 by F square when we are uh, putting in the terms of the Darcy friction factor. Now, please understand even if we are using the fanning friction factor, the value of F will change, the, uh, the value of the transmission factor will remain the constant. So, uh, we find that if this F is in terms of fanning friction factor, then we know that this 4 into fanning is the Darcy. So, this 4 4 will get cancelled. So, fanning friction factor will be simply inverse of the square of the transmission factor. So, uh, before we go the um, we will see more of these particular expressions in our subsequent lectures and uh, we find that these are the uh, references which you may refer to to find out more detail about this particular uh, friction factor and other rest of the equations for the uh, gas flow rate and the pressure drop. Thank you.